Hi everyone! After School is a channel I've been asked to address many times. Um, I find it a pretty interesting channel because sometimes you see it listed among other really good educational channels like um, Veritasium, Numberphile, Kurzgesagt, you know, Crash Course. And it really does have good stuff on it. But it also has, I suppose you could call it um, pseudo-intellectual nonsense on it. And uh, some videos promoting what I would call uh, questionable social views. But that's not what this is about. I don't want to make videos about politics. What I do want to address is a video on that channel with a lot of really bad math in it. Hello, I'm Randall Carlson, and I would like to welcome you to a very special episode of After School. I'm a designer and builder by profession, but have for many years been an avid investigator into the marvels and mysteries of this amazing world we inhabit. I would like to invite you to join us here on a journey into the realm of sacred number and symbol and the forms, patterns, and cycles of both space and time. Yep, it's about to get spirit science level stupid. Now, seriously, Jordan? We measure our life in terms of days of 24 hours, referred to as a tropical or solar day. And it turns out that 24 of these hours are 1,440 minutes. This is one of the key numbers within the ancient canon of numerical cosmology that the ancients used to basically design and create their world. Okay, but why are there 24 hours in one day and why are there 60 minutes in an hour? I mean that there are 365 days in a year, roughly, is because we can observe that the Earth rotates around its axis a little over 365 times in the time it takes it to complete a full revolution around the Sun. That's an empirical observation, but that there are 24 hours in one day is not. As far as we know, the division of the day into 24 hours came from ancient Egypt, where the day was divided into a dozen hours of daytime and a dozen hours of nighttime. This was because the number 12 is very convenient to work with, as it's evenly divisible by 2, 3, 4, and 6. Compare that to 10, which is only divisible by 2 and 5. Working with the number 12 has the advantage of making fractions less common. A third of 12 is 4, a third of 10, 3 and a third. A quarter of 12, 3, a quarter of 10, 2 and a half. See what I mean? 60 is another number that has lots of divisors, so it was actually used as the base of the Babylonian numeral system. This is why we divide hours into 60 minutes and minutes into 60 seconds. But we could just as easily have divided the day into 10 hours, the hour into 10 minutes and so on. In fact, there was a system like that introduced in France at one point, but it never caught on. The point is that the numbers 24 and 60 are completely arbitrary choices. These numbers are actually carriers of information because each number stands for meanings uh, beyond just the apparent ones. Yes, obviously. Numbers can be used for lots of things. That's kind of the point. Space measure, we talk about a foot, we talk about a, uh, of 12 inches, we talk about a square foot. And you'll notice that the square foot has the same repetition of digits, 144, as the 24 hours does. All we do is we tack a zero on that and we have the number of minutes in a day. Yes, well, the foot was divided into 12 inches because, again, 12 is convenient. A square foot becomes 12 times 12 equals 144 square inches. Uh, oh yeah, square inches, not inches. Take 12 times 12, then that's 6 times 2 times 12, or 6 times 24. Obviously, it will be a factor of 10 less than 60 times 24. We see a similarity because we have arbitrarily chosen to use the same numbers. Uh, I'm going to call your attention to the one square yard, which is 1,296 inches. No, uh, again, square inches. Everybody knows that a circumference of a circle is divided into 360 degrees. 
Again, this is an arbitrary choice. There's nothing about a circle that says 360. The Babylonians arbitrarily divided the circle into 360 degrees. They picked 360 because it's a multiple of 60 that is conveniently divisible by lots of numbers and it's also close to the number of days in one year. So Babylonian astronomers could say that at least on day-to-day -day time scales, it looks like things in the sky move by one degree per night. And that's a pretty good approximation. Also, 360 degrees is not the circumference of a circle. It refers to an angle, not the distance traveled as you walk around the circle's periphery. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. For this reason, in higher mathematics, we express angles in radians instead. 2 pi radians is one full revolution. We express angles using properties built into the circle. So the decision to divide the circle into 360 degrees is another arbitrary choice made for reasons of convenience. But notice that number 1,296,000 and you'll see that it's the same number just raised by three orders of magnitude as the number of square inches in a square yard. Yes, of course. A yard is 36 inches, so a square yard is 36 by 36 square inches. 360 times 60 times 60 equals 360 times 3600, which equals 36 times 10 times 36 times 100, or if we rearrange that, 36 times 36 times 1000. Obviously, 1000 times greater than 36 times 36. This happens because you keep reusing the same numbers by arbitrary choice. Okay, now another thing you might notice about most of these numbers from 1440 to 8640, 43, 200, 144, 1728, 36, 1296, is that they all Kabbalistically add up and reduce to the single digit nine. And we'll see it's 60, 60, and 60, which equals 180 degrees. Again, notice that we've got the number nine recurring. We go to the square, which is 4 times 90 degrees. The total number of degrees defining the square is 360. Again, notice, everything adds up to 9 for some strange reason. I'm sorry? Strange reason? It's only strange to you because you clearly didn't take those optional math courses in high school that the nerds took. Take a number p with n plus 1 digits in it. And let's name the 1's digit a0, the 10's digit a1, and so on. The number can be written p equals a n times 10 to the n plus a n minus 1 times 10 to the n minus 1, and so on, until we get down to a1 times 10 plus a0. Now we're going to divide p by 9, and that's the same as dividing each term by 9. Notice that any power of 10 over 9 yields a remainder of 1. So the remainder we get when we do this whole operation is a n plus a n minus 1 plus blah 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 a 1 plus a 0. The sum of the digits. Let's call this new number r. We say that p and r are congruent mod 9, that is, both yield the same remainder under division by 9. p yields r, and r obviously yields itself. And this doesn't mean that r is the smallest remainder we can get. We can keep going, repeating the process with r as our new p until we get an r that is a single digit number between 1 and 9, the original p's digital root. This is exactly what you've done. Add the digits together. If you don't get a single digit sum, repeat until you do. Notice that if the digital root of p happens to be 9, we can conclude that p is evenly divisible by 9, since the remainder when 9 is divided by 9 is 0. What we've shown is that any number is congruent with its digital root, mod 9. That means that a number is evenly divisible by 9 if and only if that number has a digital root of 9. A trick to check for divisibility by 9 that's taught in elementary school, even though it's never explained there. So why is this relevant? Well, 60 and 24 are both multiples of 12. Any multiple of 12 is also a multiple of 3, since 12 equals 3 times 4. Two multiples of 3 multiplied together yields a product divisible by 9.
The reason why 12, 24, 60, and 360 were chosen is that they are divisible by lots of numbers, including 3. Therefore, products of them, and 360 itself, will be divisible by 9, and thus have digital roots of 9. But note that this cool thing, and I agree, it's a cool thing, only happens mod 9 in base 10. Because in, say, base 12, well, 12 over 9 yields a remainder of 3, not 1. So it doesn't work. In base b, this phenomenon occurs with the number b minus 1. You'll notice that in hexadecimal, base 16, using 0 to 9 as well as a to f as the 16 digits, a meaning 10 and f meaning 15, 360 is written 168. Those digits add up to 15, or f, making that the hexadecimal digital root, not 9. Interestingly, however, 360, or 168, is indeed divisible by 15, because 15 is 1 less than the base 16, just like 9 is 1 less than 10. You arbitrarily chose to use the standard system for measuring time, understandable since there are no competing alternatives, but you used the imperial system rather than the metric system for measuring distance and area, and degrees rather than radians to measure angles. You've been spotting funny things about multiples of 12, suggesting that you'd like to work in base 12, and now you work in base 10. You're picking and choosing and mixing conventions just so that you will find things you won't understand that will seem profound. How far into this two-hour video are we? Okay, um, um... To be continued. Uh, but before I go, here's some advice for you if you want to learn math instead of just drool over it. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org, where you can take interactive online courses in math, science, and computer-related topics at any level from beginner to advanced. Whether you're a student, professional, or just a lifelong learner, Brilliant will help you learn new skills for using your personal or professional life. There are literally thousands of lessons available, from everyday math to vector calculus, from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, from the basics of programming to neural networks, and more content is added all the time. Recent additions include several courses in data analysis, such as Introduction to Probability, Exploring Data Visually, and Modeling with Multiple Variables, as well as programming courses like Creative Coding, and a really interesting course I took myself called How LLMs Work. All lessons include interactive exercises that really do help you learn. Take it from a professional educator, doing exercises like these is the best way to learn. It's much more effective than just reading or watching video lectures. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer free of charge for 30 days. Sign up with the link below, brilliant.org slash martyrmer81, and get a 20% discount on your annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. See ya.